Welcome to American River Ace Hardware. I'm Forrest, and today we're going to be talking about sanding, staining, and sealing. For sanding, uh, the first thing you want to do is pick your sandpaper. Usually, you're going to start with something like an 80 grit, so you can remove a lot of material. If you have old paint that you need to take off of whatever your project is, something like an 80 grit is going to remove a lot more material than 120. Once that's off, you can move up in grit to 120, and then finish it off with something like a 300. So you can get a nice smooth finish on your product. So for starters, picking the right grit sandpaper, and whether or not you want to use sponge, sandpaper, or something like a jitterbug sander, or one of those other products. For the sanding demonstration, I'm going to be using Ace brand 220 sanding sponge. This is one of my preferred methods. Easy to grip, it's flexible, so you can go around corners, and you've got a nice edge, so you can get inside those, those corners and those cracks as well. And for this demonstration, I'm just going to be using off-the-shelf pine. And as you can see, I have some small gouge marks here that I want to work out. They're not very deep, and I don't want to remove too much material. So I'm going to be using 220, and this is good for finishing your product. And I'm going to be going with the grain for this demonstration, and later I'll show you the benefits of going with the grain, against the grain, or in a circular motion. And as you can see, those gouge marks have already started to work themselves out, and I've got a nice, smooth finish that's getting ready to be stained and sealed. Picking the right grit, and what you want for your end result. Going with the grain, going against the grain. And for starters, I've got an example of why you would want each. Here, we've got fine grit that's been sanded. Here, we have a circular pattern. It's gonna make it more dull and give it kind of an aged look. Here, we have against the grain. That's gonna give it more antique or weathered. And here, we have with the grain. And I've used a uh, dark ebony to really emphasize the, the grain in this wood. And as you can see, each one has very different results. In this demonstration, I'm going to show you why you want to sand down to bare wood to make sure that you've removed all the previous stain, sealer, or wax. Here's a piece of wood that I have treated with wax, so you can see why you want to make sure that everything's been removed before you start staining. I'm gonna get a lot of stain on this, just everywhere. And as you can see, it's already starting to bubble and it's not really going in the wood to stain it. If you notice, I can take this stain off really easy. It's because that layer of wax, it's preventing the stain from penetrating inside the fibers and giving it that lustrous stain. Once you've sanded your surface and it's ready to be stained. After that, you have a number of different options. What type of stain you want, whether it's a gel stain, whether it's a traditional stain, or whether it's a two-in-one polyurethane and stain. And there's different reasons for picking each, and I'm gonna explain and demonstrate why you would wanna use each one. For starters, we're gonna go with a gel stain. And why you would wanna use this is it's got much thicker viscosity. So if you're staining something like overhead or on a wall, you're not going to get as many drips. It's going to stay on the surface longer and it's going to be easier cleanup. Next is a traditional stain. This is going to be very thin. So this is going to penetrate deep down into the fibers and because it's very thin, you're going to get a lot of drips and it can run. So cleanup might be a little bit of an issue, so you're going to have to watch that. Next is the polyurethane and stain in one. Now this, you don't have to seal it when you're done. Once it's stained, it's watertight, you're done, you're ready to go. As we're staining, I'm also going to show you three different staining techniques and why you would pick one over the other depending on your particular project. Starting out, we're going to use a brush for the gel stain. And as you can see, almost no drips. It's very thick, very heavy. And this is excellent because if you're having to stain something like a wall or a cabinet, you're not really going to have to worry too much about drips. 
I actually need more on the brush. And as you can see, I can put a lot of the stain, just really get it on there, and it's not going to drip anywhere. Now, with a brush, as opposed to using a rag or a sponge, because you have a lot of the long fibers, if you're staining something that's rough or has a lot of detail work, you can get those fibers deep down into your surface and make sure that you get good, even coverage. And as you see, I'm going with the grain. Next, I'm going to be using just a standard paper towel. For this, I'm going to want some gloves because this can get a little messier. If you're using a rag or a cloth to stain, one of the benefits is that you can wring it out if you only want just a little bit of stain and you can just lightly go over your surface. One of the benefits to using a cloth or a paper towel is that as you're staining it, you can already get some of the bubbles or any of the imperfections out as you go but it is a little bit messier. And then next, we're gonna be using the two-in-one. And this one, like I said before, has the sealer already built into it. This is a sponge method. This is my preferred method. I can get really quick, easy results in one go. And there we go, three different ways that you can stain your project. For the sealing demonstration, I'm using three different products. The first one is Ace Brand Spar Varnish. Why you would want to use this is excellent UV resistance, water resistant, it's got a long life to it. Spar Varnish is excellent for outdoor applications. Next, I'm going to be using Zinzer Shellac. This is more of a traditional sealer, also an all-natural product. Next, I'm going to be using Ace Brand Polyurethane Interior Spray. Spar varnish is going to have excellent weather resistance. It's good for indoor or outdoor. Also, it's going to dry to an amber, so if you're Trying to preserve the natural color of the wood, maybe not the best option, but excellent durability. Next, shellac. This is going to dry a little bit faster and it's going to have a fairly clear finish to it. This is better suited for indoor applications. Next, we have the polyurethane. Because it's a spray, you're definitely going to want to tape off the area because overspray is going to be inevitable. This one is going to be the fastest drying, so if you're on a time crunch, this is an excellent option. Thank you for joining us today at American River Ace Hardware for our sanding, staining, and sealing demonstration. If you like this video and would like to see more, please subscribe to our channel.